I wanted to show you a quick mini garden tour in the back of my secret garden. We're expecting um, a really huge rainstorm soon. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you what my snowball viburnum look like uh, when they're in full bloom. So these are not hydrangeas, isn't that crazy? So I know it looks like hydrangeas back here, uh, but it is um, like the second week of May in my New Jersey garden, planting hardiness zone six, and the hydrangeas haven't really come into bloom yet. Even my Annabelle hydrangeas and my incredible smooth hydrangeas didn't come into bloom yet. Lucy just showed up. She's she's such a lady. She like, comes up very quietly in back of me and just makes a couple yawning sounds, so I know she's here. So um, anyway, so these are called Snowball Viburnum. They are a spectacular uh, flower, like a shrub for your garden. And it took me a while to grow these though. So I think I put these in the ground uh, maybe about, oh, I forget how many years ago. I wanna say maybe about something like this. So if you're going to grow Snowball Viburnum, just be patient, they're so worth it. And I actually just read that they are actually considered to be an plant. Um, which means they're just going to keep self-propagating. But right now I'm okay with that because I'm keeping tabs on them. But they seem to keep sprouting up all over the place. And you can tell there's all sorts of like little baby shoots coming from the bottom. Yep. So snowball viburnum. Yep. So it's, <laughs> did I say snowball? Well, they are snowball viburnum. Did I say something different, which I might have. Thanks for the correction in case I did. Anyway, snowball viburnum. And um, yeah, so this is what they look like right now. They come in uh, like a beautiful green color in the beginning. So I'd say maybe about two or three weeks ago, uh, they came in this beautiful, gorgeous lime green color. And now they turned to this beautiful snowball white color. And uh, they have a great face life. I know this is surprising because the stem is kind of like a woody stem. And usually like my lilacs and my other flowers that come in on woody stems are usually, you know, like, pretty low on the base life uh, spectrum. But these guys have a really great spectrum and you can kind of see that storm blowing in a little bit more here. So let me show you what else I can while I'm out here uh, with Lucy in the secret garden. In back of Lucy is uh, something that's called, I'm gonna say this wrong because I always say it wrong. It's called Wajila. Uh, I think that's the right way to say it. I used to say Wigalia and that's wrong. You're not supposed to say the I at the end. So that's a beautiful, beautiful shrub. I'm going to actually make my way over there in just a bit. But while I'm still in this one spot over here, I want to show you my lilacs. Now my lilacs didn't bloom this year and that's because of a blunder that I made. I used a lot of the beautiful green lilac leaves in a lot of my flower arrangements that, you know, like we sell a lot of flower arrangements here from my florist. And this time of year, last year, we decided just to use a whole bunch of those greens because they were so beautiful. And then I realized that a lot of um, next year's growth, next year's like blooms are kind of put in place on like kind of like those old wooded stems, kind of like your like Endless Summer and your Nico. So I think I basically cut off the bulk of my lilac blooms uh, last year when I used all those beautiful leaves in place. So I blew it with that, but that's okay because I know they're gonna come back, you know, next year. I'm gonna leave them alone this year. And lilacs are also notorious self-propagators. So this used to be, this plant was probably about an eighth of its size about six years ago. And it just keeps self-propagating and sending off new shoots. And guys, I made you a video showing you how to propagate your hydrangeas um, using a method called layering. So you can check out my hydrangea uh, playlist video and um, that'll show you how to get more hydrangeas each year from you know using something called propagation, like layering propagation. So back to this neck of the woods over here. Oh guys, let me know where you're from. Um, let's see, let's, what, let me know where you're watching this from in this great big beautiful world. Let me know what the weather's like. So like I said, we're in New Jersey, I'm in Cranberry, New Jersey, and we're waiting for a huge thunderstorm to roll in. It's about 75, 76 degrees here. It's super humid. It just, it feels thick. Like it feels like a thick, thick storm is rolling in. So over here, I've got my peonies coming up and I wanted to show you something about my secret garden. I like to have a continual burst of color in my secret garden. And the way that I do that is I plant plants that have different uh, bloom times. So these snowball viburnum came in first. They were the very first ones to bloom. Actually, first the daffodils came in and some of these hellebores that are underneath my lilac came in. I'm gonna try to zoom in on them because they're right in back of Lucy. So the hellebores were the first to come in and they're still looking pretty. I mean, that is just one beautiful plant. I love that. Oh, you're a peony lover, peony. Oh, there you go, peony. 
uh, obsession. I love that. I love the spelling too. So that's my hellebores. They were the first ones to come in with the daffodils and then the snowball viburnum came in and now I'm ready for my peonies to come in. And then after these pink peonies that are back here uh, come into bloom and they kind of come and go, then I'm going to start getting the blooms from the hydrangeas that are next to it. So I always have a continual burst of color in this garden. And let's see who's back here. Let me see how to, how to walk you back to this other part of my garden here. I'm going to take a quick stroll over here. And on the way, I want to show you some of the uh, flowers that I just deadheaded off of some knockout roses that I had. So I was putting some knockout roses in the ground. I had just bought them. They were in full bloom. Now, normally my roses aren't in bloom just yet. But since I bought them from like a local garden center, uh, they had tons of blooms. And so when I put them in the ground, I noticed that some of them needed a deadheading. So this is what I'm doing with the flowers that I deadheaded. I'm gonna make some rose water out of them. So let me come down here, I'll show you what this looks like. These are some of the blooms that I cut off. And I'm also going to post a video showing you how to deadhead your roses. And I basically just put them in some water. A good way to make rose water is to kind of rinse off these blooms underwater, get rid of like all the pesticides that might be on them, all the dirt, and you can kind of boil them in a little bit of water. Uh, and then once you boil them, you can use them, uh, you know, like in teas, you can pour them in your bath. I mean, it's usually good for like digestion, I saw. Some people like to use it for their skin. And it's just a really beautiful way to, you know, kind of like recycle that deadheading that you do instead of throwing them out. And they're beautiful. I actually just put a whole bunch in uh, ice cubes. I've got like those big chunky uh, whiskey ice cubes, you know, like the big giant mama ones. And I put a ton of petals in there and I'm going to see how they look when they, you know, when those ice cubes come out. And hopefully they'll be beautiful and know your audience though when you're serving them <laughs> because some people are kind of flipped out when you put like natural things and and their food that aren't like typical so I kind of love that and you can kind of make like a muddled um, like whiskey sour out of these or a muddled like Manhattan if you just kind of muddle up these little petals put them in one of those little muddlers and then you know pour them into your drink so that I think that's kind of a cool way to kind of recycle those so let me show you while I'm down here I'm gonna show you what these hellebores look like close up I'm gonna try to go slow. I don't want to lose you guys. Sometimes I lose, I lose some of the internet when I go too fast out here. So let me get underneath. I'm literally like laying on the ground right now. So I'm laying on the ground showing you these. Aren't these beautiful? So these are the hellebores. They like to be planted in partial shade, which is why I have them underneath my lilac. But aren't they spectacular? They come in purples and whites and all different colors. And these gals have been blooming since like the end of February. And like I said, it's May already. So these are a really, really long time bloomer. They're just so beautiful. Okay, and I'm gonna try to take a walk over here to show you the shrub that I was telling you about before. The one that I can never pronounce. <laughs> white, white Gila. I think it's actually called White Gila. So this is a beautiful, beautiful flowering shrub. Um, these gorgeous flowers don't last that long. I'd say they probably last about maybe two, maybe three weeks. And then you just have beautiful variegated leaves. So if you can tell, the leaves down here are like kind of two-tone green. And I use a lot of those leaves in my flower arrangements as filler flowers. And they're just very, very interesting. They're beautiful to see. This plant is super easy to grow. And there's a version of it that's like a deep maroon that's called wine. So if you're looking for like a really cool shrub, you might want to take a look at this one. I think I, I've had this one here probably for about 10 years also. And it's just like a really no fuss, low maintenance shrub to have. And the, the pollinators love it. I'm actually going to try to zoom in on this bee right now. I mean, I could sit out here for hours and just watch the pollinators do their thing out here. Let me know if you guys can see this little bee in here. Hold on. He's actually tremendous. I think he's a carpenter bee. You guys let me know if you can see that zoomed in here. I don't know if it gets too blurry because we're streaming. Let me see if there's another guy that's closer. No, nope, I don't think so. I hear him, I just don't see the, new, the other guy. You guys see that? And these are those leaves I was telling you about. So these are called variegated leaves and they look really pretty in arrangements. I like to do a whole bunch of variegated leaves with peonies. So I'll put like maybe seven or eight stems of this variegated you know like stem without the flowers on it and i'll mix those with my peonies in about two or three weeks when they start coming into bloom oh lucy's had it she's like leaving 
leaving the set. She's done. <laughs> it's like so hot out here. We're like sweating. All right, here's this bee again. So let me see if you guys can see that close up. Guys, if you have like grandkids or children, um, you know, that love being out in nature, it's really fun to take them out in spring and let them see the pollinators in action. So this is one of the very first plants that those pollinators, you know, are actually able to find food in. And it's really fun to come out here. I mean, I can come out here at any hour uh, during a sunny day and find tons and tons of bees and honeybees and carpenter bees and all sorts of fun creatures out here just, you know, getting their meal. So that's the story with that. Next to it, who else do I have back here? I've got a whole bunch of proven winter uh, hydrangeas here. And I've got some proven winter butterfly bushes. Now guys, these were only planted last year. So I'm going to give you the advice. Some people have asked me, you know, should I prune back my new hydrangeas? What should I do with them? I leave them alone. I, I want them to get established. I don't want to give them a haircut. I don't want to take away those beautiful green leaves because there's not that many of them. They're, they're babies, they're just starting out. And guys, don't be upset if you don't get blooms from your hydrangea like the first year or two. They're just getting established. It's more important that they work on their root development. So um, my mother-in-law you know, was over here the other day and she's like, you know, you, you forget this hydrangea that I have. It's not blooming. I can't take it anymore. It's too much pressure. And I'm like, it's only two years old. You know, leave it alone. It's gonna wind up blooming. Just sometimes they just need a little extra time uh, to get their blooms in order. So be patient with them. Make sure that they're planted with enough sun and make sure you're not overwatering your hydrangea hydrangeas guys a lot of times i find that people overwater their hydrangeas but by the same token if they're new plants especially if they're new plants make sure that they have enough water and what i do is you could do something uh, that i call the knuckle test you basically dig down into the soil well i'll show you you dig down into the soil up until like your second knuckle so move the mulch away because the mulch doesn't count as the soil you're going to dig down until about your second knuckle and when you pull your finger out and then you go by the base of the plant here let me go a little closer to the plant here you stick it in the ground and when you pull up your finger if your finger feels moist it means that the plant probably has enough moisture but if you pull up the soil on you know on your, where your fingertip is and it's dry chances are you need to water your plant whether it's a hydrangea or a rose most of your plants so that's called like the the knuckle test or like the second knuckle test i call it and so yeah so this is what the secret garden looks like right now we've got you know uh, another lilac that's kind of in the back let me my, sorry, I have mud on my finger now. I don't want to gross you out. So that's my white lilac that was in bloom this year, uh, but now it's out. So I didn't, I didn't botch that one like I botched this purple one. And there's just more of those hellebores underneath that lilac. So you can tell how they're the, in the shade. The ones to the right over here, actually it's kind of fun pointing like this. I feel like I'm at like a PowerPoint. The ones over here were in bloom in February and the ones over here are just in bloom now. And then next to it, I've got more peonies. Those are over here. And then I've got giant, giant limelight hydrangeas that are in the back. And they're probably about 15 or 17 feet tall. And they have massive amounts of blooms that are probably going to come out closer to summertime. So closer to like June, maybe like the middle of June. So some flower tribe members have said, you know, oh, my, li my limelight hydrangeas aren't doing good. I don't have any blooms. And the same thing with my smooth hydrangeas and my endless summer. A lot of times it's just too early. Like I haven't seen any real hydrangea blooms in my garden just yet. And like I said, it's May. I'm expecting to see my Annabelles and my Incredibles blooming pretty soon. But right now the only giant burst of color is from the Snowball Viburnum. And the rest are just kind of waiting to come out. And who else is back here? We've got a butterfly bush back here, which is another reason why we have all the pollinators. And here's another peony. Let me see if I can get in close here without losing you. So far we've been lucky. Okay, so here's peonies. They have a ton of ants on them. Don't get grossed out because they're just kind of licking off some of the nectar that's on the top of those beautiful new blooms. And um, that's okay. The ants do not hurt your peonies. Uh, it's a very symbiotic relationship. They're licking off some of the sweet nectar that's on the top. And some gardeners feel like when they do that, they help the flower to open up. Now, I don't know if that's a myth or not, but I usually leave the ants alone. And what happens is usually I find that when they open up into those big, beautiful blooms, the ants are usually not there anymore because that nectar 
is pretty much gone or washed off or used up. And once that plant like, you know, kind of like bursts open, usually I don't see the ants that much. And if the ants are there, I just kind of give them like a little knock to the ground gently before I bring them in the house. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you know, it's, it's nature. What are you going to do? These are some of my other smaller hydrangeas here. Here's a no-no that I have going on right now. I've got too much mulch piled up on like the base of this, so I'm gonna pull it back. So it's a good idea to have mulch on them, but just pulled back and maybe about one or two inches. Okay, and this guy, I don't know who you are. I actually think I'm moving mulch away from a weed right now. <laughs> I think it might be a weed. It's kind of pretty though, right? I don't know. And then I've got a, a knockout rose back here. What else is back here? You hear the plane over my head? It's like so loud. This is a butterfly bush. We prune this way back. So guys, if you can prune back your butterfly bushes and you will get loads and loads of extra blooms. And um, yeah, and that's just uh, another one of those um, Wygela plants back here. And that's the story. This is a table that Sheldon and his friend made. And this is like another limelight right here. So that's the secret garden. That's basically what this little section of the secret garden looks like. All right, guys, that's it for now. We beat the thunderstorm, thank God. I wanted to make sure that I showed you some of these very beautiful flowers here before they get all washed away, because I can almost guarantee that if that storm blows in, all these flowers are going to be gone within the next two days. So I'm glad I was able to share them with you. And um, yeah, that's it. Please come say hi to us over on my Cranberry Fields Instagram. Uh, page and please take a look at the new podcasts I have I would love to have some reviews on those I'm the new kid on the block and I can definitely use um, some reviews on the podcast those are all in descriptions below you can check that out and, and uh, oh you're very welcome guys you know if you want I'll try to take a couple questions because I think the internet's pretty good now so let me see if there's any garden issues that I can help you with anybody have any questions I make most of my podcasts from the flower tribes questions so um, we've got you know a lot of those going on right now Anybody have any peony issues or any hydrangea issues that you want to talk about? Because now's a good time. <laughs> now's a good time before the thunder rolls in. I'll give you just one more once around while I'm waiting for you to think about what's going on in your own gardens. And guys, most of the questions that I get on, um, on YouTube and, uh, are, you know, and on Instagram, and we get loads of them. I mean, we get hundreds and hundreds every week. So please be patient if I don't get to answer everybody's. And that's why we have our Flower Tribe Facebook group. We have Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group because there are gardeners all over the, all over the world that are helping to answer some of these garden questions that I can't get to. And they're a really fun community. So there is a description for the Flower Tribe Facebook group um, below also. So check uh, those folks out. They're a lot of fun. They're super giving and they're super giving of their advice and their pictures. It's a great place for you to upload your pictures also. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna get going. And um, listen, if you come up with a question later on, uh, you know, you can always put it in comments below and I will try to get to it, or I might even make a video out of it. And that's it. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with a couple moments of quiet here. Uh, I'm lying because a question just came in. Hold on a second. Hydrangeas are showing lots of green buds. How long until the flowers are? Right, great question. It depends on your hydrangea. So, uh, you know, like the Annabelles are gonna be blooming pretty soon. And if that's, you know, if it's around May, uh, if that's your normal bloom time, it depends on where you are. So here in New Jersey, my Annabelles are gonna be blooming soon. My Incredibles are gonna be blooming soon, but I don't expect to see blooms from these Limelight Hydrangeas or from my Endless Summer or from my Nikos until like midsummer. So I would just kind of hold the phone, just, you know, kind of, you know, hang, hang tight. Okay, guys, so I'm going to give you a couple minutes of uh, relaxation quiet, and then I'm going to take off. Thanks again for joining me. Love the flower tribe.
Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that little relaxation period we had. Um, someone had just said, when's a good time to propagate uh, your hydrangeas? So I actually started propagating some of mine now, and um, you can check out that video that I have. I'll try to link it uh, in a couple minutes to the bottom of this video. I need to get in the house, though, to do that. And um, yeah, so you can basically start propagating them now from some of those uh, you know, like newer stems that are coming out of the ground or some of the ones that are kind of flopped over that have green leaves on them but no blooms. And um, yeah, so you could start doing it now. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks again for joining me.